lakes on Saturn's biggest moon. I'm Jane Platt with a podcast from JPL, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Our guest is Dr. Ellen Stofan. She's with Proximy Research in Washington, D.C., and she's on the Cassini radar team. Right now, she's teaching a class over in London, and we've got her with us today. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, you have a cover story in your colleagues in this week's journal Nature about lakes on Titan, which is Saturn's largest moon. What about those lakes? Tell us briefly what you now know that they're like. In late July, uh, we took had a pass across the surface. We get a narrow strip about 250 kilometers wide and over 1,000 kilometers long. This particular strip went the furthest north that we had ever seen on Titan. Now, it's been long hypothesized that Titan might have oceans on the surface or some sort of lakes. So far, none of the instruments on Cassini had been able to detect any evidence of current liquids on the surface. We'd certainly seen evidence of past liquids, both in the radar data where we saw all kinds of what looked like dry riverbeds, and also the Huygens lander as it was descending had had identified some of these same channel-like features. But when we took this radar pass back in July, very uh, high up into the northern hemisphere, once we got um, into the region above about 70 degrees north on Titan, there were just lakes everywhere. We detected uh, a whole lot of lakes, um, in fact, over 75 lakes, um, ranging in size from about a mile and a half across to over 40 miles across. So these are, are quite a lot of lakes, and some of them quite substantial in size. And tell me about them. First of all, how are they unlike those on Earth. Uh, Here on Earth, our lakes are filled with water. On Titan, it's 90 degrees Kelvin, which is just extremely, extremely cold. Remember, Saturn is is very far out from the sun, so uh, it's very cold out there. It turns out at those temperatures, uh, what's liquid is methane, uh, which we think of as being very different, like gas on the Earth. But on Titan, it's actually cold enough that methane is a liquid. Uh, We also think that the lakes have some sort of um, another hydrocarbon compound called ethane in them. So, again, things that on Earth you just don't find in a liquid state, out at the cold temperatures of Titan, um, they're a liquid. But despite this sort of, you know, very exotic chemistry, in other senses, the lakes are very like those on the Earth. Um, The the methane-ethane would be kind of transparent the way water is on Earth. It would be behaving like water. Uh, it could have, the lakes could have small waves on the surfaces. Um, so if it was possible for you to stand on Titan and look at the, at, at the lake, you wouldn't really know it was this weird chemistry. Um, but that's the major difference. The other similarity is part of the reason we could identify these as lakes is the way they look. They look very similar to lakes on Earth. They have channels um, feeding into them, just like you have rivers feeding into lakes on the Earth. Um, the shapes of them, their shorelines, all of those geologic aspects of the lakes are actually very familiar. Interesting. So if you actually could be on uh, Titan, you might sit there and see a a nice, uh, beautiful-looking lake, and maybe you could watch the sunset over it? Well, the one thing that uh, we were talking about this on the radar team because we were thinking, you know, what would you see if you were standing by the edge of one of these lakes? That's, you know, assuming you could take the 90 degrees Kelvin and all the other stuff is, you know, of course, it's, it's a winter in the northern hemisphere of Titan, and you're quite far away from the sun, so it would be rather dim light. And instead of being blue, uh, you know, the way our sky is and then the way the water looks on the Earth, everyone, everything would have sort of an orangey, reddish hue. So in that sense, you would certainly know you weren't on the Earth, but, you know, again, the, the landscape might not as, be as exotic as, as we would think. Uh, so what is the significance in terms of the science discovery? What What is the uh, excitement about? What does this tell you or what path does it put you on? Titan is right now really the first body in the solar system that we've been to that has an active fluid liquid cycle. You know, on the Earth here, it's the hydrologic cycle. Um, you know, we almost have to make up a new word for it on Titan. It's the methanologic cycle. But, but it's the first place where, we're, where you have rain, you have erosion, you have lakes. They probably vary seasonally. Um, You know, obviously at some point in the past, Mars had that, but on Titan, it's happening right now. And that's extremely exciting from a scientific point of view, because our ability to study climates and our ability to understand how these cycles work, um, you know, if we only have the Earth to study, we can only have a limited understanding. And so here's this body so far out in the solar system made of such exotic stuff, and yet the processes are ones um, you know, that are, are so important here on the Earth. And so 
I think in the long run, understanding how climates evolve, how bodies evolve, Titan has an awful lot to tell us. Interesting. So it's relevant to us on Earth as well. Yeah, but uh, one of the other points on Titan that is so interesting is, I mean, Titan's long been a subject of interest because of the fact that it has all these hydrocarbon chemicals. It has water ice, which we know from having found volcanoes earlier with the radar on Titan. We know that that ice, water ice at times melts, and you must, must at times have, have water in liquid form, though it would freeze relative, you know, extremely rapidly. Titan has all these chemicals on it that are the building blocks of life. Um, and so because of this kind of, um, you know, similarity to a lot of the chemicals that were around on the very early Earth, Titan's always been of interest in this whole question of, you know, how did life evolve? What were the processes going on? What were the chemicals involved? Um, and we've long thought that Titan had important things to tell us about that. And our discovery of these lakes, the fact that they exist in liquid form, um, we think that they persist. Um, they vary over seasons, but they probably persist on the surface for some amount of time. Um, I, I think confirms that we're on the right track. And boy, if we could get access to those lakes, analyze the the uh, liquids that are present in those lakes, the organic sludge that probably exists at the bottom of those lakes. You know, I think again, Titan just has an awful lot to tell us, not just geologically, but but something about you know how how life originates. You would obviously like to know a lot more about these lakes. Will you have opportunities in future flybys by Cassini? Well, I will say we already went back over some of the lakes that were presented in this paper. We already have one look at them, and that data is currently, uh, I mean, we've already had two looks at them. Um, but in again, over the next coming years, we'll go back and revisit them several times. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Sure. Thank you. More information on those lakes on Titan and other Cassini discoveries at nasa.gov slash Cassini and http colon slash slash saturn.jpl.nasa.gov. Thanks for joining us for this podcast from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. <laughs>